we welcome you on this Sunday, December the 20th uh, in Ottawa. Um, we are thankful to God to be able to deal with some little minor technical issues. And on the, this very snowy day or snowy morning, we extend a welcome to all of you who are viewing both now and later uh, from Ottawa, from the US, from the UK, from Malawi, from the Philippines, and from elsewhere. We just pray that God will bless you today through this message and that it may be a source of encouragement to you. We hope that you have your Bibles with you, that you have a notebook, a pen to take notes, to write down questions. Uh, that you can ask us later. Uh, the message today is called the eternal gift, the eternal gift. And we will be looking specifically at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. So the message will be the eternal gift. Before the message today, um, I would ask that we uh, begin uh, with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the freedom we have to study and to hear and to read and to ponder and meditate on your word. I pray that this message today will touch our hearts, challenge our minds, and Lord, may you anoint and empower your messenger as this message goes forth. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The eternal gift. The eternal gift. In Resource um, Magazine, it mentions the following in relation to Christmas. An American Express survey about Christmas gifts found that the fruitcake was chosen most often, 31%, from a list of worst Christmas gifts. It even finished ahead of no gift at all. When asked how to dispose of a bad gift, 30% of people would hide it in the closet, 20% of people would return the gift, and 19% of people would gift, give the gift away. This suggests that the Christmas fruitcake might eat, get recycled as a gift for the host of a New Year's party. So most people do not like to get something like a fruitcake at Christmas time as a gift. During Christmas season, there is so much of a focus on material gifts, too much of a focus. People get gifts they do not want. People give gifts out of cultural pressure to people they may not even like. People in their extended family, people at work, like a boss, whoever it may be, people feel pressured to give. People give gifts they can't afford. People give gifts and they just feel just so caught up and so pressured to to buy even at the last minute when most gifts are purchased by a large number of people sometimes people get offended or they get hurt if certain people do not give them gifts at all or give them gifts of less value than the gift that they gave to that person there's a cultural and economic push to give or receive the perfect gift that ultimate must have or a gift with the greatest emotional impact on the receiver is there really a perfect gift is there something of lasting value that is priceless is there a gift that does not need to be returned does not cost us anything the price has already been paid and will only need to be received once? Is there a gift that is more than just a material gift that could one day 
be destroyed, stolen, or lost. Material gifts can be destroyed, stolen, or lost. They're not permanent. <clears throat> Is there a gift that will not be destroyed? <clears throat> that cannot be stolen. That cannot be lost. Jesus taught about not pursuing temporal, material things. And Christmas gifts and other gifts are material things. And Jesus said about not pursuing temporal material things, but to pursue spiritual things, spiritual treasure instead. Matthew 6 and verses 19 to 21. Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21. <clears throat> Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So here the focus is not on material, temporary gifts. Here the focus is on laying up spiritual treasures which will not be destroyed or taken away. Gifts can be a small thing, but they can mean a lot and not just at Christmas time. It depends on what our view is of what a gift is. I once, many years ago, in 1984, in Malawi, Central Africa, was traveling on a very packed bus. Now, sometimes buses would be so full of people, when a bus got to a stop, people would rush to get on because the bus itself was not only full of people, especially in the rural areas, but it would be full of uh, sugar cane and chickens and it would be really packed. So this day I was seated on the bus as it came to a stop and there were no remaining seats on that bus. An elderly Muslim man, I, I could tell by the, the way he was dressed, an elderly Muslim man got on moving down the aisle towards me. So I got up and gave him the gift of my seat. I learned much later that he was the representative of a major Muslim chief in that area. And my actions as a Christian were spoken of with, with much favor. It did not cost me anything to give up my seat, but it had more impact than I realized at that time. Yes, it was an inconvenience to stand on a moving bus and where I am tall, if a bus went over a bump, then my head would make contact with the ceiling. But I knew it was important to show respect to this person, to this elderly man, and to give him that gift of my seat. What special gifts can we give this Christmas time? They may not be wrapped, and they may not be things. They could be actions, like giving up a seat on the bus. What gifts are we ready and willing to give this Christmas time? It could be something that may cost us in small ways, but have a large impact on others. The Christmas or secular holiday season has become for many a time of family, of fun, of food, and of festivities, but not a time of faithful observation of the real reason for the season summed up by the angels speaking to shepherds in the remote little Judean town of Bethlehem in the outskirts of that town 2,000 years ago when the shepherds were visited by 
angels and the shepherds were at the lower end of society <clears throat> they were not at the top of society so they were doing their job and they were out in the fields with the sheep and suddenly angels appeared to them and in luke 2 and verses 10 to 11 we read luke 2 and verses 10 to 11 we read and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord the shepherds went to see this marvelous sight to see this eternal gift that god had given in the form of his son jesus who was born of the virgin mary in this place this out of the way town of bethlehem and they went and saw the baby and they left rejoicing and they had so much joy that they shared this news with everyone they met they shared this gift of joy this news <clears throat> that a savior christ the lord had been born <clears throat> we read in john three sixteen, in reference to god giving his son for god so loved the world god loved everyone that he gave his only begotten son jesus that whoever if anyone would believe in him believe in jesus they would not perish they would not die in their sins separated from god but they would have eternal life they would be through faith in jesus forgiven of their sins and become part of the family of god forever there's a very powerful story told of <clears throat> what happens one time in the World War II, troubles and challenges in Europe. And the story is told about a Dutch pastor. A Dutch pastor was helping Jews escape the Nazis when he himself was caught. He was loaded into a boxcar with several Jews and with others to be sent to a concentration camp. It was a long, frightening journey throughout the night. Finally, the train stopped. The doors were open and lights were shining in their faces. They thought their worst fears were fulfilled and then they realized that something unexpected was happening. People were cheering and singing. And the folks on the train discovered that they were no longer where they thought they would be. They were in Switzerland, safe in the hands of people who cared for them. And Switzerland was a neutral country during World War II. They were safe. Someone had dared to switch the train tracks the pastor telling this story then asked what do you do with a gift like that what do you do with a gift like that the people in the train had been heading toward their physical death in a concentration camp but someone had switched the trap they were on so their final destination was changed instead of a destination that would have lead led to death they were rerouted to a destination that guaranteed their life god by sending jesus to die for us switched our tracks all were headed to eternal judgment and separation from God, spiritual death. But God sent us an eternal gift, 
his son, Jesus. In Ephesians 2 and verse 8, <clears throat> it says salvation is a gift. Not earned by works, least we would become proud. Ephesians 2 and verse 9. But freely given, with no strings attached, an unearned, free, eternal gift. What do you do with a gift like that? How can people so quickly reject a gift which came at such a cost? The death of Jesus. So as the pastor said, when they arrived in Switzerland, what do you do with a gift like that? In knowing that they now faced life instead of death, we who face spiritual death, if you are looking at this message today, and you are separated by your sin, by your self focused life and you have never come into a personal faith relationship with Jesus then you are on a road that will lead to destruction eternal destruction but God out of his mercy and love he provided a way for your railway track destination to be changed to sending his son Jesus he provided a way for that journey to be changed and for that destination to be changed by providing an eternal gift his son Jesus Christ in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 we read for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. <clears throat> this was a prophetic verse written by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Jesus. Yet it specifically describes him. It describes someone who would be more than just a man someone who would be God 700 years before the birth of Jesus and as we look in this verse in Isaiah 9 6 we can see that this verse does not focus on just a human person we see it speaks of a child being born, a son being given, the government will be on his shoulders, the responsibility that he would take spiritually. Jesus took responsibility on his shoulders in being born to die, in taking on the sin of the world and the responsibilities and obeying the Father and going as the Paschal Lamb in leading a perfect life to sacrifice his life on the cross and to rise from the dead. And it mentions four things in reference to Jesus that show that he's more than a man. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wonderful Counselor. <clears throat> Not just a counselor, but a wonderful counselor. And in, this is brought out further in Colossians 2 and verses 2 to 3. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom, speaking of Jesus, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is our wonderful counselor. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge we can come to him with our challenges do we allow his words to bring us comfort do we allow his words 
to bring us direction. Jesus, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He is the wonderful counselor. Amen. Secondly, he is mighty God. <clears throat> mighty God. Second Peter 1 and verse 3, it says, His divine power, referring to Jesus, has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. <clears throat> Jesus came as the Son of God. Jesus, in rising from the dead, has divine power. Even at age 12, as he taught to learn religious leaders in the temple, he confirmed that he had been sent by his Father. He knew that he was more than just a human person, but that he was also sent with a divine purpose, <clears throat> that he also was God. In Matthew 28 and verse 20, as Jesus said of himself, all power and authority had been given to him. He was more than just a man. In Philippians 2 and verses 9 to 11, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus was more than a man. Jesus was the Son of God, the eternal gift sent by a God of mercy and grace to provide an opportunity for those slaves to sin. Romans 3.12, it says, There's no one good. Those who were slaves to sin, the God of mercy and grace, sent the eternal gift, Jesus, to die in our place, that our destination might change as we come into that faith relationship with Jesus. So I challenge you today, do you have that faith relationship with Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God? Do you have that relationship with him? The prophet Isaiah also says in Isaiah 7, verse 14, he refers to Jesus as Emmanuel. God is with us. Jesus was more than just a man. He was mighty God. Do we believe that Jesus is more than just a man or a teacher or a prophet, but that he was the Son of God, that he was born to die, that he not only died, but that he rose to life, rose from the dead, that we might have life through him as he conquered death. In Romans 8, as we read that passage, we see that nothing will ever separate us from the love of Christ in Jesus, even death itself. Praise God. Number three, everlasting Father. <clears throat> Jesus would continually be praying to God the Father and saying he'd come to do the will of the Father, but let us never forget that Jesus said in John 10, verse 30, the Father and I are one. And in Romans 8 and verse 15, we read, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And to by him we cry, Abba, Father. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. <clears throat> Do you have that adoption into the family of God? through personal faith in Jesus Christ, whereby you can call out, Abba, Father. Jesus is also the everlasting Father. Mm -hmm. 
Number four, Jesus is referred to as the Prince of Peace. John 14 and verse 27. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace in the world is temporary. The peace in the world does not last. Jesus gives us an eternal peace that nothing can disrupt, that nothing can interfere with. <clears throat> you have the peace of God. Is Jesus the Prince of Peace, your Savior and your Lord today? As during this Christmas time, we focus on his birth and why he came. If you are separated by your sin, you are one of the reasons he came to be born and later to die out of love for you. In Philippians 4 and verses 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about any. Don't worry. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. That's saying be worshipers as you pray. In every situation. And that's not easy. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So often we come to God and, and say, why me, why me, and I want this, and I want that, instead of coming to God in an attitude of worship and adoration mm -hmm. and thankfulness. And when we do that, when we do not allow ourselves to be controlled by fear and anxiety. We live in a world today where there's so much fear and so much anxiety. People have no peace mm -hmm. in their hearts and in their minds. It says, when we do not allow ourselves to become a slave to fear and to anxiety, when we bring our request with thanksgiving, when we have that attitude of worshipers, mm -hmm. then it says, the peace of God which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Everlasting Father. Jesus is the Mighty God. Jesus is the Wonderful Counselor. Are you at peace today? Do you have the peace of the Prince of Peace guarding your hearts and minds. <clears throat> Jesus is that eternal gift given to a world separated from God by sin. Have you, by faith, received this eternal gift? This gift that will never be taken away. This gift that will never be destroyed. This gift that will never be lost. This gift that is not temporary. This gift that is eternal. Have you received that gift? Because it is a gift. Gifts come. True gifts come with no strings attached. Salvation is a gift. Ephesians 2 verse 8. God out of love took the initiative in sending his son Jesus to die for you on the cross at Calvary. God took the initiative. Jesus is that eternal gift. Jesus is that wonderful counselor. Jesus is that mighty God. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Are you at peace today? Have you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? You can receive that gift today. You can come into the family of God by saying, Dear Lord Jesus, I re realize that you were that eternal gift, mm -hmm. that you were the Son of God, that you came to die in my place, and that I cannot meet the requirements of a holy God through my own efforts. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 
and verse 9. Mm -hmm. But that I realize that out of love, God, as a God of mercy and grace, sent his son Jesus to die for me. Jesus, out of obedience to his father, mm -hmm. father and out of love for us, went and died on the cross and rose from the dead for my sins. And right now, we can reach out in faith and say, in faith, dear Jesus, I ask forgiveness for my sin. Mm -hmm. And I invite you into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. You can receive that eternal gift mm -hmm. today during this Christmas time when we focus on that gift, Jesus coming to the world. You can receive that gift right now. And as the Bible said, be born again into the Spirit of God. Be transformed and changed by the Spirit of God. So we thank God for what He has done and for what He will continue to do. And for those of us who are in that personal faith relationship with Jesus, are you gripped still by fear and anxiety? Do you wonder what to do in decisions? We can come to Jesus. And Jesus is God. We can come to him and ask direction in our lives. And if we are gripped by fear, we can, as we become worshipers and as we focus on developing an attitude of gratitude, that grip of fear and grip of worry can be broken. And we can truly be at peace. The peace that comes from Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to close with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, I pray for anyone here who is watching this now or later. I pray if anyone here is separated by their sin, they have never come into that personal faith relationship with Jesus. They may have been a member of a church and have a lot of knowledge about God, but have never come to personal faith in Jesus. I pray that even now, they may cry out and say, Dear Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. I ask forgiveness for my sins, and I invite you into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And I pray for any Christian who is watching this who is gripped by fear, gripped by unrest in their soul and in their mind. I pray that even now they will reach out and say, Dear Jesus, I know that you are the Prince of Peace. And I bring this fear to you, knowing as I worship you, as I praise you, as I focus on you, that your peace that passes all understanding will guard my heart and mind through you, especially during this Christmas season. But every day, no matter what we face, we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Jesus is that eternal gift. We thank God for what is happening and for what he has done in our life. Jesus is the eternal gift. Jesus is the wonderful counselor. Jesus is the everlasting father. Jesus is the mighty God. Jesus is the the Prince of Peace. Is he your Prince of Peace? Amen. May you live in his peace during this Christmas season. And may, uh, by the grace of God, you have opportunities mm -hmm. to share with others that Jesus is the eternal gift. That yes. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Who can bring peace in their lives no matter what they are facing. So I'd like to just uh, pray at this point. Dear Lord, I pray for each prayer request that has been presented today and the unspoken prayer requests. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And we pray that you will move in response to our faith, to the prayer requests, spoken that have been mentioned today, and unspoken, whatever they may be. We pray, Lord, that you will move in response to these requests. And that we may see your power at work as we pray to you and as we 
claim victory in our lives mm -hmm. through our faith in Jesus Christ, the eternal gift, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We thank each one of you for watching today or whenever you have watched uh, this message. I pray that it may have been a source of encouragement to you, mm -hmm. a source of inner strength to you. May you live each day with the joy of the Lord, for the yes. joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And that joy specifically comes through our faith relationship with Jesus, to whom one day every knee shall bow and tongue confess, and to whom one day the hosts of heaven and all in heaven will be, say, will be singing, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. We will be worshipers one day. We are being trained to be worshipers right now as we pray with thanksgiving. Become that worshiper. You're being trained for the eternal heavenly choir right now in your life on this earth. Because one day we will have an opportunity to sing praises to God and to glorify Jesus to whom all power and authority has been given by God the Father. In response to the faithfulness of Jesus the Son, in obedience to the Father, and in coming to die out of love for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen? Amen. May God bless you, guide you, direct you, and may his love envelop you in this coming week in whatever you may face. Mm -hmm. Goodbye for now. By the grace of God, we will see you again on Wednesday. We will see you by the grace of God on Thursday uh, in our Zoom Christmas Eve service. And by the grace of God, we will see you again this coming Sunday. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Mm -hmm. Bye for now.